Hi there, welcome to this video on Google search skills. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about how Google works. We'll take a look at some of the advanced search techniques that you can use in Google, and I'll show you how to set the University of Essex as your home library in Google Scholar. At the end, we'll also have a look at some alternatives to Google that you might find useful depending on the sort of research that you're doing. First of all, let's talk about what Google is and how it works. Let's start by having a think about the question, does Google search the web in real time? The answer to this question is no. Google doesn't search the web in real time. What Google does is it takes regular snapshots of what's available online and shows you those snapshots when you do a Google search. This is important to remember because it means you are seeing the world through Google's lens. Google will show you information based on what it assumes about you and what you want to see. And the reason for this? Google is an archive. Your search is just through Google's database, not through the real-time web. It's only when you click on the website in the search results that you get the most up-to-date version of the website. This can be helpful sometimes, as Google is able to make use of cached versions of websites. Google takes a snapshot of each website as a backup in case the current page isn't available. These pages then become part of Google's cache. We can see from the example on screen how you can find the cached version of a website. If you go to the three dot menu here next to the URL, and then go down to cached, this will let you access the cached version of the website. If the website you're trying to visit is slow or not responding, you can use the cached link instead. Just be aware that it isn't available for every website you find in Google. The other thing to be aware of is that Google personalizes your search results. You can see some of the examples of how Google does this on screen. Because Google appears in so many different devices, including your smartphone, your browser, and your emails, your activity in these devices can all impact your Google search results. Google monitors what you search for and the links you click on. This information is used to personalize your Google search results and show you sponsored links or adverts. This information is stored in cookies on your computer or as part of your Google account. Google will also try to work out your location from your IP address so that they can deliver local content. Google finances its free services by tracking users and targeting them with adverts. In fact, it tracks you across the web even if you never visit any Google properties because so many other websites commonly use Google AdWords, Google Analytics and its other tracking or advertising products. But isn't it a good thing that Google makes it easy for you to find things? Whilst it can be good for your personal searching and your general browsing, we need to think about how it can impact your academic searches and when you're researching particular topics. Personalization of Google can bring bias to your results. So for example, Google trying to give you results that are local to your geographical location can limit the amount of research that you see from across the world. So how can you turn off personalized searching? There are a number of ways to do this. For example, you can switch off your web or search history, you can log out of your Google account and you can clear the cookies on your device or browser. The easiest way is probably just to go into a private or incognito browsing mode. So now that we have that background out of the way, let's have a look at how you can search Google more effectively. The first thing that you can do to help with your Google search results is to turn on verbatim mode. Usually when Google gives you its search results, it shows you what it thinks you're searching for. This can be useful for dealing with accidental spelling errors or for seeing synonyms for the words you search. But for your academic searches, you may want to force Google to look for the exact words that you are using. To turn on verbatim mode, you can do this for any search simply by going to the tools menu here, going over to all results, and then clicking verbatim. This will update your search results with the new verbatim settings. Another useful thing to know about is Google commands. You can use these in both Google and Google Scholar. There are a number of commands that you can use, some of which are listed on the screen here. So a commonly known one is the exact phrase command. By putting a phrase in double quote marks, you can force Google to search for exactly what's within those quote marks. This can help to narrow down your results and make them more relevant. Just be aware that Google sometimes ignores the quote marks if your search would otherwise return zero results or what it thinks are too few results. You can also exclude particular words from your search results by putting the minus sign in front of the word that you want to exclude. Just make sure that there's no space between the minus sign and the word. So for example, you could search for Jaguar minus car and this will show you search results that don't include car. As you can see on screen, you can combine the commands, so you could use the double quote marks and the minus sign to help narrow down your search even more. You can also use the asterisk to stand in for up to five terms between two words. 
This is useful if you're not sure of the exact industry jargon and if you want to identify additional search terms or phrases related to your search. Note that this will mean it will search for one or more words and it does not truncate the word, despite this being commonly the case in academic databases. Google uses automatic word stemming so it searches for all possible word variations. As we can see from the example here, solar asterisk panels can return a whole variety of different results. The other thing to bear in mind with your Google searches is that word order matters. Google will rank the first word that you use in your search as higher importance than the second. This means that you should put the most important terms at the start of your search, even if it doesn't make grammatical sense. You can also connect search terms using the OR command. This can be used to broaden your search results or to include variations on words. For example, you can use football or soccer to show results that include one or either of the terms. Just remember to write the OR in capital letters, otherwise Google won't recognize it as the command. If you are struggling to get this command to work properly, you can always run separate searches instead. Another effective way of searching is to use the CITE command. By using CITE colon and then the domain name, you can restrict your searches to that specific domain. You can use this with the minus command to exclude particular websites from your search results. This can be really useful for academic searching. We can see if we run a search for something like e-cigarette that a normal search without the site command will show you a wide variety of different websites. If, however, you were looking just for government regulations or information from the government, you could use the site colon.gov.uk command in conjunction with e-cigarette and we see that immediately all of the results are filtered down to .gov.uk websites. Another similar command is the file type command. This can help you to identify specific file types on the internet. So for example, you might put file type colon PPT to find PowerPoint presentations or XLS for spreadsheets or alternatively PDF for research papers or even the occasional Nando's menu. Another pair of commands are the in title and in text commands. The in title command tells Google to look for whatever follows it in the title of the web page. You can also use the all in title command if you want your entire search term to be looked for in the title of the web page. The in text command does a similar thing except that it searches for your search terms in the body of the website. So for example, climate change in double quotes and then in text Thunberg will only show search results where climate change is a key term and somewhere in the text Thunberg is mentioned. So far we've been talking about Google's products generally. However, you can also use Google Scholar to narrow down your search results to more scholarly academic research. It will show you fewer results and it will make it easier for you to find what you're looking for. So all of the commands that we've spoken about so far also work for Google Scholar. However, they also have an advanced search feature which you can find in the menu in the top left here. This will bring up a pop-up menu, which basically lets you to do the commands, except in a slightly different way. So you can see here how your search results will be impacted when you use these different fields. When you are searching on Google, you are likely to come across things that you can't automatically access the full text of. This is because Google doesn't automatically recognize your affiliation with the university in the way that searching through the library catalog would. As a result, this is a rough idea of how you could search for things online. A general process would be to set up your library links on Google Scholar, then to install the browser extensions from the library. And then if you can't find it online, use the library search. And then if you still can't find it, you can request an item through interlibrary loans. Setting up your library links will let Google Scholar know that you are part of the University of Essex. And if it thinks that any of the resources that it finds in its search results can be accessed as a result of your affiliation with the university, it will give you a link through the university subscriptions. It is important to bear in mind though that Google isn't always accurate in this regard and so we'll come on to ways that you can counter that a bit later. In order to set up your library links it's very simple. Simply go up to the options menu in the top left, come down to settings, go to library links and then search for your institution. Then simply do a search and you can see here view it at Essex. This means that Google Scholar thinks that you can access this article as a result of your affiliation with the university. Other tools that can help you with your academic searches include the browser extensions. There are many different browser extensions available, but you can find links to the two that the university library recommends through the Access Full Text Anywhere link on the library homepage. This will take you through to the download links for Lean Library and LibKey Nomad. Once you have installed them for your particular browser, 
Simply select the University of Essex as your academic institution and they will link into the library catalogue. When you are on a page that your library affiliation allows you to access the full text of, the browser extensions will give you a pop-up that will take you straight through to the full text. Another great place to search is the library catalogue. You can find the search bar for the library catalogue on the library homepage. From here you'll be able to find all of the resources that you have available through the library. This is probably the best place to start searching. If you have exhausted all of these search options, and still can't find the items you're looking for, you can always ask for an interlibrary loan. This is where the library tries to borrow the resource you're after from a different institution. This can often be a quick and effective way of getting what you need. Now, let's talk about a few alternatives to Google. Whilst Google is probably the most well-known of the search engines, there are alternatives that do things slightly differently that might be more effective for what you're looking to achieve. Million Short is a great way of finding lesser known items on the internet. As its name suggests, it removes the top 1 million items from the search results so you can find lesser known items. You can also change the number of items that it removes, just in case you're searching for something that has fewer than a million items in there. This can be useful to find things that are poorly optimised for Google's algorithms, or that is so niche that Google or Bing would never find it. Another alternative is Carrot Search. This gives you your search results in a visually appealing diagram that connects all of the topics together. This can be useful for identifying concepts that you may have missed and for surfacing information buried in the deeper realms of Google. Finally, you can also use Microsoft Academic Semantic Scholar to help you find what you need online. These search engines use artificial intelligence and semantic searching to cut through the clutter and give you results that are more relevant and impactful to your work. Semantic has a very good author map and the ability to pull out figures and tables. To recap what we've covered in this video, we've shown you how to use the advanced search options and commands in Google and Google Scholar, how to set up library links in Google Scholar, and explored a couple of alternatives to Google. Thank you for watching this video on Google search skills. Please get in touch with the library if you have any questions. We have a wealth of resources on our website. We hope to see you in the next video.